Hi, thanks for tuning in to another visual review for Mud and Blood, a podcast dark and grim. I'm Matt, I'm one of the hosts of the podcast. Um, this week we're going to be looking at Shadow the Demon Lord, a horror fantasy game by Rob Schwab. And this is a visual review. We have done a full um, standard review of the book, clocking in between one and a half and two hours on our podcast. So if you haven't checked that out yet, um, that's going to be going into all the detail of the book. We're going to be looking at mechanics. We've looked at mechanics, setting, um, the visuals as well. We've talked quite a bit around there as well. Um, accessibility, utility, that sort of thing. So if you want to hear our full review, head over to mbcast.co forward slash 23, and that will take you a link to, to the web page where you can download the uh, that episode. Alternatively, you can find Mud and Blood on pretty much any... Um, podcast app on a phone or a tablet, that sort of thing. So the visual review of Shadow the Demon Lord. Um, basically what I'm going to be doing, if you haven't watched any of these before, is showing you what the book looks like if you haven't got it already. If you're on the fence thinking about, oh, the review sounded, or the, yeah, the full review on the podcast sounded really good, but I'd like to see what the book looks like. We are doing this for every book that we review. Um, so Shadow the Demon Lord is a hardcover, well, first quick caveat. Um, I was a Kickstarter backer for this book back in 2014 when it ran, I think it was, um, 2015 maybe. And this is one of the, I, I backed it at the hardback cover, uh, hardback book reward. So I don't believe this book is available anymore to purchase, although I believe um, there will be some more reprints happening in the future. You can buy this print on demand through Drive Through RPG, but the quality will be different to the one I'm holding. This is an offset print book and it's very high quality. So just very quickly before I lay the, ta um, the books on the table and give a closer um, look of the layout and the art and that sort of thing, I'll just quickly show you the covers. So this is a hardback glossy cover. Um, there's no ribbon in it, but again, I feel a bit obsolete talking about this one because you can't actually buy it. it it's got the oversewn binding that you would expect, so very high quality throughout. Um, I did want to show a couple of other things before I, I dip um, dip into the interiors. Um, the GM screen is a standard GM screen if you're interested in buying it. It's three panel landscape format. Not a lot to talk around really. It's got three separate pieces of art and it's full of tables as you would expect. I'm not going to go into too much detail this, just quickly showing what they look like format, which honestly you could see just by going to a product page. Uh, the other ones I wanted to talk around a little bit are the supplements that you can get print on demand because I have I have three Shadow the Demon Lord products that I um, have, have ordered print on demand. So you could expect similar quality, I think, um, from the core rule book if you get them the way I did. And these are these were all standard quality on Drive Through RPG. You can get premium, I think, on the core rule book by paying more. So obviously the quality will be better than what I'm showing here. But um, yeah, I'll be showing these in a bit more in a bit more detail. These are all soft covers, so I can't really do a comparison with what the core rulebook would look like if you were to order that print on demand, because that would come as a hardcover book. I'm not sure it's available as a soft cover. Um, yeah, not a lot more to talk about there. Um, I do have I've I've actually run a campaign with this, so I have put extensive uh, post-it tabs throughout the book. They obviously, when you order a book, those don't come inside. Um, so you have to try to just kind of ignore those as I'm as I'm flicking through the review. Okay, so let's head over to the desk and look at the books in more detail. Okay, I'm gonna try and flick through this fairly quickly because there's quite a few books I want to show. And again, this is more to just give a taste of the art style, the layout, and that sort of thing through the book rather than doing a really depth in depth review of every page or that sort of thing. So this is the cover as we've um, as we've seen from a little bit more from a distance. Lovely piece of artwork on there. The back cover has different artwork. So we have a picture of a demon here and a picture of a warrior on the side um, with the blurb on the back. End papers have the Kickstarter backers on the front and the back end papers. There were a lot of them. This is a very, um, a very popular Kickstarter. So they cover two different pages. And my name is in here too, which I'm quite happy to see right there. Anyway, um, let's move on from the end papers. Um, we turn the page to the, to the uh, title page, and you can see all the contributing people there, including the alpha and beta testers, um, that sort of thing. Um, 
Interior illustrations, there are approximately 10 people who have worked on the illustrations in here. So this is a fairly a fairly sizable book. Clocks in at, I think, just under 300, well, 272 pages. Um, and yeah, having 10, 10 artists does help give it a bit more of a cohesive feel than some of the other books we reviewed that have had a lot more. Um, you'll see that as we go through. Then we've got a table of contents on the next page. There's really no space wasted. Forward is squeezed in underneath the second page of the table of, um, table of contents. And then we jump straight into a preface written by Rob Schwab and the introduction chapter. So really, there's no space wasted before basically opening the page and getting into the meat of the game. It's, uh, yeah, which I quite like. Anyway, let's talk about um, artwork while we're here. Artwork is, uh, so first, the format of the book is, um, I believe, eight and a half by, to my ruler here. So it's a shade under 11 and... Eight, yeah, so with the cover, I believe this is an eight and a half by 11 inch US letter format um, book. In metric, for those of you not from America, it is 28 millimeters by 21, mil 21 and a half millimeters. <clears throat> it's got a two column format pretty much throughout the book. Obviously, the preface doesn't have that. But as you'll see, as we're flicking through two column layout for the rest of the book. Um, Call-out boxes are in a slightly different shade, but um, the the contrast and the the lightness is very similar to the background color. So they stand out, but they're, um, you do, it, there's no requirement for there to be really dark backgrounds on the page, which is quite nice. It's very, very readable. Um, you can see that there's a bit of a gray. It looks a bit gray, the background. That's because it has a gray kind of stone-washed parchment effect, I guess I would call it, uh, for the whole book. They have um, put in a little page border going around all the all the edges, which is just a kind of a red line, dark red line. And there's a pentagram on all four of the corners with a chapter number on the top pages, as you can see here, chapter numbers and page numbers at the bottom. The top next to that, the text at the top has the chapter name and at the bottom it just says Shadow of the Demon Lord. So. Just pointing this out because it's fairly easy to flick through the book and find if you haven't got put the post-it tabs in like me, you can quickly see, okay, I'm in chapter eight, land and shadow. That's the setting chapter, chapter seven on magic, etc. It's very um yeah, it's it's good layout design, I guess I should say. It's not I mean it's not it's not gonna change the way layouts, you know, it's not groundbreaking or anything, but it's uh, it's pretty good. Tables, here's a good pick um page of tables. Tables are Mostly, I think there are some that are full full width of the page rather than um, fitting into the columns, but uh, for the most part, they are they are squeezed into the columns, which is fine. They have a black a black header row, and then they just alternate between a, a transparent row, which which has the gray behind, and then uh, a white a white row. It looks good. It's easy to find um, because of, because it's got the black header row. It's quite easy to see where the new ones start. They also have these headers in there. Um, to kind of pull them out. So they look, it fits in with the rest of the theme really well. Um, and they look good. So no complaints there on the tables. Now let's look at artwork. Um, artwork varies between half page, um, half page pieces of artwork to small drawings. Um, I don't believe there are any full page. Um, I had a quick flick through and I didn't see any full page pieces of art in the book. Um, it fits in with the overall uh, feel of the book, which is a horror fantasy game. So it's a little bit on the darker side, um, a little bit more maybe violent than some other fantasy games you may have seen. Um, but yeah, just kind of flicking through, you can see there that, that nothing is really jumping out as being full page artwork. It's all squeezed around the text. There's a lot There's a lot of um, information in this book, although as we've said in the review, the, the core rules are pretty, pretty sound um, and easy to grasp. I thought that might have been a full page piece of artwork, but it's not. It's a full column piece of artwork. This is probably the only piece of artwork in the in the book that is full uh, page and that is the map of the the map of the setting, uh, the lands of rule. Um, it's a really nice piece of art. I'm just kind of pausing on it here very quickly. As you can see around the edge, it looks like it's been stretched out on leather. Um, it's kind of like a leather stretched effect, which is which is really nice. Um, and it's got a bit more of an abstract feel. The text is kind of looks like it's been painted to kind of dribbling ink a little bit. Um, it just looks really good. It's it's a bit different to the sort of very clean um, maps I've that you would generally see in a fantasy game. So just really wanted to show that. It's a nice nice kind of uh, piece of art there. And yeah, 
not really a lot more to talk about with the core book, I feel. Um, I don't want to flick through all the chapters. We've gone through the book in some detail again in our on our podcast review. But um, yeah, you can kind of, I guess one more thing to quickly talk about before I move on, just how the chapters are arranged. Every chapter starts with a half page piece of art um, and a kind of uh, the chapter name in this kind of uh, red box, which max, which matches the red banner, sorry, which matches the red banner on the front of the book. So um, it looks good. It's clean. It's simple. It does the job. And yeah, um, if I'm going to just mention the art, I would say it's that the art style generally is a slightly more, um, probably slightly more abstracted style of art. As you can see, there are a few pieces of um, black ink, like black and white inked art throughout the book, but the majority of it is color. Um, this book did very, very well at Kickstarter, so there was a lot of art unlocked. Um, yeah, and really pretty consistent throughout, despite there being a lot of different artists working on it. I don't get the feel that there's a huge change in styles as you flick through. Um, there's a, a very small amount of change of style, but it's not it's not particularly noticeable, as I would have said with some of the other books we've reviewed in the past. Okay, so one last thing to look at at the back is the index. It has a three page, I believe, oh, f nearly four page index, very, um, very comprehensive, which is good to see. And right on the back, we have the character sheet. Now the character sheet, you can obviously download and print as well. There, there are fan made ones um, that have expanded this out. So you've got more space to write things, but for the standard campaign, which lasts 11 sessions, um, this is more than enough I've found. Um, yeah, it just, it just looks visually stunning, I think. Um, it's it's simple. It's got a lot of white space for you to be able to, to write things in. It's on one page, and it just fits in overall with the rest of the theme of the book really nicely, I feel. So you've got all your stats right here in the middle on the, around this centered around this pentagram. And you can basically put magic, talents, your weapons and equipment down here, your description of your character, the name, professions, all that sort of stuff. The paths that you're in are go up here, and your ancestry, which is like your race, up at the top, your level, etc. So it's got everything you need. Um, if you want to put additional information in, you could, if you were to print this off, you could obviously just flip it over on the back and then just write on the back of the character sheet. So I find this is a really good character sheet. I really like it, and I think most people probably would agree it's uh, it's been done really well. Okay, that's the core rulebook done. So next up, I just want to talk around the companion book. Um, not because of the companion book has different art or anything like that. The difference is that this is a print-on-demand product from Drive Through RPG. Um, this is currently the only place, other than other than if you can find a used copy, this is the only place that you can get the core rulebook currently. Drive Through RPG print-on-demand. So I thought it'd be worth just quickly showing um, how this looks because it has exactly the same layout. If I just open to a random page, you can see it has the same gray background. It's got the pentagram. Um, page numbers and chapter headers. It's got the page border. Um, yeah, as I've said, the background's the same. It's got the same style of call of uh, call out boxes and the art follows the same theme. The chapter headers, everything is exactly the same. Um, I find that the background is slightly darker here. I, th I believe I've ordered the standard quality print on demand, not the not the premium one for this. Um, however, it is extremely readable. I've got really no, complaint, really no complaints with it. Um, I believe at the Cora book, you've got a choice of paying extra for premium kind of heavyweight paper, which which has better punchier colors, etc. Um, however, for my purposes, I would say for the standard quality, this is this is more than adequate. Um, it's it's very very good. I've seen some print on demand um, books that I've ordered in the past with backgrounds that print out. Um, darker and it's a bit harder to read the text. This doesn't have that problem. Um, it just it feels really it feels really well done. So um, just you know just wanted to quickly say if you're if you're interested in getting the book, I would not I would not be worried about getting a print on demand copy of it. Godless, quick talk around this. This is one of the additional settings that was kickstarted. Um, it's like a Mad Max fantasy Mad Max. Um, so. It's got guns, it's got cars, but it's also got orcs and goblins and all the rest of it, elves. Um, I just wanted to quickly mention this because this this is darker. It has a darker background. It's a little bit harder to read. Um, however, it doesn't. It it kind of changes the layout. So this is different to the core rulebook because it's a different game line. You have this kind of pavement, um, asphalt, ba page border on the rights and the lefts, right and left. Sorry. And this is there's this kind of murky gray. Um, it looks a bit like a fog effect. I would I would like to say. Um, it's still readable, 
but it's just a little bit darker. So there's less contrast between the writing and the background on this one. Otherwise, it follows the same uh, format. Obviously, the fonts are slightly different. They're a bit more futuristic looking. Um, the art is still same high quality, etc. But I just wanted to quickly pu pull this one out because um, Rob is going to be looking at produ producing additional settings for the game, similar to God, um, similar to Godless here. And if you're getting them print on demand, then be aware that the, the layout will be slightly different to Shadow the Demon Lord. So I just wanted to quickly mention that. Okay, and last but not least, I just wanted to give a bit of a closer look at the artwork on the GM screen. Again, I'm not 100% sure if this is still available to purchase, um, but I, I believe it will be um, reprinted at some point in the future. Um, because Rob is going to be starting a Kickstarter for a new product very shortly. So just very quickly, this is a three-panel landscape one, as I've said before. Um, a piece of art which is showing, uh, this is one of the Wizard's Towers, uh, the Wizard's Tower in the capital city, um, surrounded by this kind of apocalyptic wasteland because the city itself has been dis um, largely destroyed in an uprising by the orcs. You have this pentagram with an eye in the middle, and the last panel shows a demon with a bunch of winged demons around it, picking up and eating sheep from a farm. So, yeah, this is all very evocative for the setting. It looks, it's you've got the bleak kind of um, apocalyptic feel that this one gives. You have the kind of um, occult feel that the middle passage gives. And then it's reminding you that, you know, Shadow the Demon Lord, the, the, the term demon is in the title of the book, but also we get an image to say, yeah, this is very much about demons and horrible shit like that. So, um, yeah. That's the game. That's the game master screen. Again, more tables. This follows the same layout from the books. Actually, it has in the corners these um, these pentagrams with the border going around the sides. Obviously, there's no numbering required. The tables match the format of the book. You've got a, a double panel spread here, a three panel spread here, or three column I should say spread, and another two panel spread on the side. So it's been laid out well. It's got a lot of uh, most of what I think you would need. Obviously, no one's ever perfectly happy with a GM screen because it's always subjective on which tables you can you need and what can fit in. And yeah, that's it for this review. So thanks for tuning in. Again, the link for the full review, if you want to hear our thoughts on the book, how we've rated it, etc., um, is at mbcast.co forward slash 23. You'll be able to find a link to that in the com in the description below. And if you've got any feedback or comments, please leave them in the comments and uh, we'll we'll see those and get back to you. So thanks for watching and catch you next time.